Hey guys, welcome back to the Starkville YouTube channel. For this video, Monica and I are going to take a look at this Cellpic Mini 3D Printer Star A. Now, Cellpic was nice enough to send me this item for free so that I could do a video showing it to you. There will be a link down below if after watching this video you decide this is something for you. So we're going to go through setting this thing up. We're going to try and print something on it. And I'll tell you what, I have wanted a 3D printer for quite some time, but I've never used one, never set one up. I have no clue how this works. So if Monica and I can figure this out, then anybody can figure this out. Let's get right into it. All right, we gotta screw this up. You've already done it. <laughs> you know what we call this part? Blue. <laughs> no. We call it Woods in the Box. Yeah. All right, so. Are you supposed to do that before you open it? Probably. <laughs> the other thing is, am I missing instructions or are we on our own on this? Are there any instructions at all here, huh? Nothing. Come on, act like you've done this before. I already said I hadn't done it before. <laughs> okay, well this... Little control box. Definitely goes over here. Is there any directions on the box itself? Is there anything under the box, in the box? Okay, first thing I have to say is we need instructions included with things because I don't have a clue How to put this together. Okay, so that has to go like that somehow. Which means this sits like this. How do you not give someone instructions on how to set the damn thing up? Alright, this comes with a little card reader of some sort and a 8 gigabyte micro SD card. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Because uh, easy to assemble and saw within two minutes. Two minutes? Yep. Come on, time's ticking. I guess. Whole process only takes three minutes or even less. Well, I've been looking at it for at least three minutes. Where are so those screws going? X so we got it mostly set up. You put this top piece into the base there. And there's two screws. Screw there, screw there. It goes through with the wing nuts on the back. Now I have this piece that is not plugged in. That I'm guessing goes into this other piece that does not currently have anything plugged into it. Because that would make a lot of sense. So now that's hooked up. This little side thing right here. Hold your filament. There's a piece on the bottom that goes in these hooks you gotta press pretty aggressively to get it to go in there then this just lays like that and you get your little thing of filament can just hang there the box on the side there's two little tabs that it just sits on and then over here your barrel connector powered adapter there you have your uh, printer cord and a slot for the micro SD you only have four buttons here and we're still guessing as we go because there are no instructions. And I've never used one of these before. I feel like there's no instructions. Like, there's an assumption that this is just basic common knowledge. It's 2 plus 2 or it's reading a clock. But if you already knew all this stuff about 3D printers, if you already had a 3D, you would... So, the next thing we're going to do is there's a little button over here. It's a switch that turns it on. Did you hear it? You hear it? Now, only because I saw a little two minute video, a person had a piece of paper like that and they went to each corner and they go like this. And they go like this. Now maybe that has to be adjusted because it's hitting right there because they're slid right under it. I think you're leveling the base, but do I know? No, because I don't have any instructions. I'm just guessing as I go. So let's hit the home button because I saw that in the video too. Okay, we're moving. 
We're moving. Okay, so if we go for a little piece of paper. Oh, we're hitting. I don't think we're supposed to be hitting. I think this has to go down. There's these little thumb wheels at each corner to adjust it. You can see right there. I know I saw a guy slide a piece of paper under there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So tightening it in brings it down. Look at that. Look what I can do. I can slide paper underneath it now. So now if we hit this button again, I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more. It should go to another corner. And I'm assuming we do this four times. I'm assuming. It didn't do anything. I thought you had to do each side. It sounds like something you should have to do each side. In the video he did each side. I thought all he had to do was hit this button here. Let's try that button. Try that button. That button. Oh, oh, the plus sign's flashing. Don't know what that means because I don't have instructions. I don't have instructions, so I don't know what the plus sign flashing means. Minus sign's flashing. Minus! Do you know what that means, Monica? No. No, I don't know either because it didn't come with any instructions. So I don't know what that means either. Maybe when it does that, now I have to hit plus. Does hitting plus do anything after that? No, I don't know. Salty a little bit? As a sweaty ball sack. <laughs> yeah, we can make it go up and down and kind of do this little crap, but that's that's as far as it goes. Maybe I'm supposed to manually move it to each spot. I have no idea. Why don't I know, Monica? Because <laughs> you don't have any instructions. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. I don't have any instructions. What's that doing? I don't know, because I don't have any instructions. <laughs> oh, good. Good, I'm glad. Well, you raised it up. That was good. <laughs> It's just something different than what you did. It, it goes up. I see that now. Well, it's just doing the same thing from a distance. Oh, boy. Is it in? Hit play. Hey, you know why that didn't do anything? Because we don't have instructions? So we don't know how to work it. How else fails? Go home. I want to see if it ever turns off on its own. Yeah, you try that paper trick. How's that paper trick working for you? Well, you've got the plus thing going. You think that matters? Because <laughs> we don't have any instructions. Exactly. <laughs> My company's going to email you back. Okay, Mr. Dingy. <laughs> Those are technical terms. Mm. Very, uh, you know, up front. Yeah. Yeah, thinking... But he's going to be like, there was two screws, and you stick the plastic stuff in the hole. How hard is that to figure out? Oh, you're moving! <laughs> Do a trick. <laughs> hey, it's going to the other... Uh... Do you want to put this deal? Wait, 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 let it go all the way down. See what it does. It's on home. Yeah. We've never made it to this corner before. It's like a new level of Zelda or something. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Let's see what happens now. See, I thought I was supposed to go to all four corners when we did it last time, so maybe it'll do that now. Oh, no. We've already been the first. Dang it. Go down. No. It's repeating itself. Hey, it got a little tighter. Maybe you just gotta. Oh yeah, we're good now. We should go to a third corner. Come this way. <gasps> this is progress right here. We're on third. 
<laughs> How come these things can't self-level? Isn't that sound like kind of a basic principle? Oh, in the oh, middle. Shit. Is it actually going to do something? Yeah, it's going to go to work. You better have enough stuff to make this work. It's in the middle. Do I have to hit play now? Yeah, I don't even know how much filament is that. Like, how far does that go? Let's see what this thing does. Okay, now we hit, I hit play. You think? What do you think? Uh, that didn't do nothing. I don't know what the tie wraps are for. There's two tie wraps. What do you think the tie wraps are for? I don't know because I don't have instructions. You think it's this difficult to get the that part working? How the hell am I ever going to figure this part out? Well, should I hit a button or am I just supposed to stand here like a jackass a little bit longer? Okay. Well, we'll wait for an email back from these people. I think we should leave it on. I'm not leaving it on. No? No. It's already, it's already wasted my time. It's not going to waste my electricity, too. <laughs> One thing I will tell you is, without an instruction manual, this is difficult to figure out. Unless maybe you are a 3D printer expert, then maybe this is just baby stuff to you. But for someone in my position, the item did not come with an instruction manual. However, the company sent me a copy of an instruction manual and how to set up software to make this whole thing work. So I will put a link down below that has the instruction manual and the software setup guide. That sounds like a good thing to call it. Um, so that this is an easier process for you. So first thing we're gonna do, we have to level the base right here. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna hit the home button. This thing is going to go to its default location. And once it seats itself there, then we're going to press and hold the home button for five seconds and we're going to start the leveling process. You can see it's heated up. It went from a fast flash to a slow flash. So we can stick the filament up through the hole in the top, as you can see. In the instructions it says push the filament until it comes out the extruder, which I guess is the nozzle at the bottom. But you also don't want it right up against the bed, so we got to raise it up a little bit. So we're too close to the bed. If you press and hold the play button for three seconds, it'll raise. There it goes. Lesson learned. We had to turn off the positive sign first and then hold the play button for three seconds to get it to go up. That's more than one centimeter. That's got to be more than one centimeter, right? I think so. Okay, so then we're going to hit the plus sign again. Wait for it to go slow again. And then we'll push that filament in until it comes out the extruder at the bottom. All right, so we're supposed to push this in until it starts coming out the bottom. Uh, it's coming out the wrong end. Why is it coming out the side? <laughs> why is it coming out the side? That's not right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, that's great, of course. What the hell is that? <laughs> huh, I would stop feeding it. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Ooh, look at that. Got some white gooey stuff coming out the bottom. Okay, should I hit stop? Sure. All right, we got our G code in there. We should be able to just hit play. And we should be printing. Not sure what that move was. <laughs> Uh, it's trying to clean itself. It's like, here, you clean that mess up. Okay. Had to have a clean end. White poop.
All right, it says it'll take a half hour to print this. Then you guys will get to see the mysterious thing I decided to print. There it is. We'll have to go back and check the tape. But Monica and I gave up after two hours. So let's see, is this thing just... Uh-oh. How do you get these things off? Just like that, I guess. Hmm. This side's supposed to be hollow, but it's got a little a little something-something. Might need a knife or something to fix this. Well, it's supposed to be a bit holder. See, it's not exactly the right shape. And I don't know how much this would be the plans that I found on Thingiverse or what. But you can see there was at one point where it, like, got off kilter there. See that little ridge. But anyway, you go and try and put a bit in there. and I might have to do some... some oh, Jesus. Some work to get that to fit in there. On the back side, it's supposed to have a hole for a quarter-inch ratchet. Apparently, punch him in the face. <laughs> Got it all heated up with the plus sign again. It went slow. Then we hit play. Now, Thingiverse said this one takes... Six and a half hours. The last one said it took a half hour and it took at least two and a half. So this could be a while. But that gives you the general idea how big this next one's going to be. I'll just take two on this one because the first time, like some spots like here, it didn't show anything. It didn't have like the white line where it started going. So I thought, eh, maybe the platform's not level. So we went through the level procedure thing again, but it still kind of looks like that. Look at this fat white line it's doing right there. I don't know if that's normal. Attempt number three. We found out our line of cocaine was because that pulley right there came off the stud, and that drives this belt, which brings the head of it front and back. So that looks more like what it's supposed to. I had to take the cover off to get to that thing to put it back in place. I can't believe there's not some kind of a keeper to hold it on there or at least it's not made in some way that there's not enough room for it to just fall off. So left the cover off for now just to see what it does but also for something that's going to take six and a half hours I don't like the fact that that pulley could fall off because I'm not going to sit here for six and a half hours and watch this thing. Let's see what it does. At least now it's working for now. One thing I'm noticing, if I can get the camera in there, when it goes in, when it goes back, the belt is hitting that plastic right there. I don't know if it really matters, but it seems like the belt shouldn't come in contact with anything. See, when it goes the one direction every time. I'm well, making a little bit of progress here. I don't remember what time we started, so I don't know how long it's been, but... You can see it kind of sets a base, then does this X pattern. We'll check it again in a little bit. Alright, so one time this pulley ever already fell off and when we came out to check on this thing it was hanging way over. You could tell it was just about to fall off again. You're supposed to be able to resume printing so we stopped the printing. I pushed it back on and then tried to resume printing and it acted like it was going to start all over again and the nozzle was way too low and it was bumping into this and it's going duh, 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 duh. So I guess we're going to start all over again 
and I'm going to get a hot glue gun and put a little dab of glue in there because it's the best option I can think of to keep that pulley from falling off again. Added the dab of hot glue. I don't know if it'll work or not, but hopefully that keeps that pulley from falling off. Monica and I are guessing we are five hours in. So I guess we'll check it in the morning, see what it looks like. And that's how much we got left. That should be enough. Oh, I think my hot glue is holding up. That's right. Not sure how long it took because we gave up and went to sleep, but come back in the morning. I don't know how to get off this thing. Anyway, it's a little holder for micro SD cards. A full SD card could go this way. I'll go like that. Or USB goes in the middle. It's a little crooked in spots. We'll have to get those other things to uh, see if they fit too. Monica, get it off. Get it off, Monica. That's what I thought. Maybe you're supposed to spray it with that Pam stuff first. <clears throat> Think that would work? I don't know. Wax paper it? Maybe you clean up? Well, definitely don't do it this way. But this is an adventure. A really crappy adventure. <laughs> Broke it. Oh, there we go. Well, good thing we have a hot glue gun. <laughs> you always look at the positive side, baby. That's why I love you. <laughs> there we go. Now we got the glue. Hey, at least that thing stayed on. Not much filament left, but let's see if we have enough for one more small print. Coming along nicely. Come on, filament. Hold out. Hold out. Here's our third and final print. It even came off that time. It's a little bit holder. These little tabs to help you give it a good screw in. Interesting thing is both of the little bit holders that I made came from the same person on the Thingiverse website and both times the bits don't fit without a little customization. I don't know if that's a printer problem or the person who created these designs problem. There you have it. I had to hammer it in so it'll suck it out but the concept was pretty neat. We made three prints. This one and this guy on the ratchet were both designed by the same person and they were too small. But this was by someone else and it fits perfectly. You get the micro SD cards in these little slots. You get the full size SD cards in that slot and you got the USBs that can go on those you see how they're all interchangeable you could have put an S uh, USB there you could have put a big SD card there this thing was beautiful worked perfectly except for getting it off the bed so it leads me to believe that it wasn't a problem with the printer with these other two that it was most likely a problem with how they are designed and I'm pretty sure in the program you can scale things so maybe if you scale it to 105 percent or something it would come out right so the thing is, does this 3D printer work? Yes. 
Is it the best quality? No. Does it have all the features? No. Is it the fastest? No. But it does. You put in a, uh, um, a file, you put in one of these designs, and it spits out the object. So, yes, it works. It's not the most refined product. You have wires that just kind of hang out the back here. This thing just kind of sits here without any thing holding it at all. And of course, how can you forget the gear popping off and I had to glue it back on? Like you shouldn't have to do that with a brand new product. And this thing's a Kickstarter thing, so maybe it's not fully developed and designed and all of that. Maybe there's still some kinks to work out. What I like about it is I'll put the Kickstarter link down below. And if there's something else that comes up it's for sale somewhere, I can update that link. But I like that it's inexpensive. And for someone who is just curious about 3D printing or who wants to get into it but doesn't want to spend an entire paycheck on a 3D printer, this could be a good option. You get your toes wet, you figure out a cool little things with it, and it'll get you to a point where you know you want to upgrade to bigger and better things or it's not for you and hey, at least I didn't waste a ton of money. So to me... This is totally for a beginner or for like kids. It's not for someone who's super serious about 3D printing. And given that, why didn't it come with instructions? I mean, I got it in the regular packaging that I'm assuming everyone else is going to get it in. You would think if, if that's your market and that's the only market I can assume they're going for, you would be all in with... Uh, how-to videos and user manuals and all sorts of stuff to really get someone familiar with it and learning how to do it because otherwise without that follow-up one you're going to get a lot of returns you're going to get a lot of unhappy customers because they don't know what to do with the thing but people just aren't even going to use your product if it's such a hassle to even know the ins and outs of it. especially like the four button thing is that a universal 3d printer thing i don't know but if it's their gizmo and how's anyone gonna know how to run this thing also why didn't they just give you a full roll of filament why was it just this little four rows of of a spiral there i mean the filament's not that expensive and you've already bought the thing why not give people enough i mean i am almost out there's that and this is all i did with it it's not like that was a ton and the other thing was it came with the laser engraver and if you notice, we didn't use it in the video. Why didn't we use it in the video? Well, I emailed them twice asking, how do you hook up the laser engraver? What programs do you need for it? And they were uninterested in providing that information. They said, ah, just get a 3D printer part done. Okay. So they did provide a PDF of the instruction manual, which... I'll create a post or something with that in it if anyone needs it down the line. And they gave me a file of setting up the software to get it to work with this printer, which I can include that too. I feel like it's workable, but it's for a novice. And if you're going to make products for novices, you have to be all in on, on getting the product working for them. So I'm going to hold on to this thing. I'm probably going to use it for more little projects we'll have on the channel. Maybe we'll come up with some other stuff. But as I say, if, if I end up feeling like, oh yeah, 3D printing is awesome. This is for me. You got to upgrade to something. You got to go to something that has the heated bed, something that can go faster. You know, get a few of those bells and whistles going. So there it is, guys. There's the cell pick 3D printer. If you're interested, the link is down below. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Subscribe for a nice subscriber. I'll see you guys next time.